All right, let's get started. The reason this video exists is that I think that there should be a light shine on companies and people when they do a good thing, make good choices, you know, pro-consumer choices. And we should not just be focused on the negative aspects that are so commonplace these days. Now, I'm not saying don't point out the negative. As you'll soon see, I frequently will. But when a company starts improving upon past failures, I believe that it's worth talking about alongside areas where there's still definite room for improvement. This is where the Epic Game Store comes in. They definitely did not have the most graceful launch of the platform that we of gamers have ever seen, garnering a lot of well-deserved criticism for participating and promoting not only anti-consumer practices, but having a very unpolished and arguably incomplete platform at launch. I'll go into just a bit of the criticism surrounding Epic Game Store for those of you that are unfamiliar with the platform. Epic Game Store is owned and operated by the company of the same name, Epic Games. They are the creators of the Gears of War franchise, Bulletstorm, Fortnite, just to name a few. For those of you who do not know, the Epic Game Store is an online video game retailer with a built-in game launcher, similar to other online retailers such as Steam, Uplay, and Origin, even Battle.net to a lesser extent. The online store and their application allows players to buy and play PC games, all while keeping a collective library of all the games purchased throughout Epic. They have definitely had a rough go of it up to this point. Epic Games, both actual and perceived failing started well before the launch of the Epic Games Store, and anyone who knows about business at all knows that public perception of failing can have just as much of an impact on your profits and bottom line as any actual failing. And unless you control a monopoly, there is no model that removes the impact that public opinion creates for your company. One most likely perceived issue is that many believe because of foreign investments made to the company, Epic began to start putting investors' interests in front of the consumers, and that the original direction that the video game developer was going was left behind and was now being dictated by another company. This company, who controls about 40% of Epic's shares, with plenty of pull on the board of directors. The perception was so bad that on a few occasions, Tim Sweeney, the CEO of Epic, came out and reminded people that he is the controlling shareholder, and although the investors that he has, he considers friends and partners in the business, but at the end of the day, none can dictate decisions in Epic except for him. While this perception of the company is very real, the reality of where the decisions are coming from is not for me to decipher. It very well may be true, and very well might not be. The only stance I have on it is that Tim Sweeney is the CEO, and is the face of the company, so he is who I give credit to for decisions made, both positive and negative ones. His company, his responsibility. To add one of my favorite quotes regarding this type of issue is when it comes to the consumer. Their perception is your reality, right or wrong, it usually doesn't matter if they believe it. Therefore, you have to address it. And one of the first responsibilities that fell to Epic with the launch of their online store was when it was found out that in the program there was a form of spyware that resulted in the copying of files from any Steam folder already on the user's computer without asking for permission from either Steam or the player. Steam, of course being Epic's largest competitor in the online video game distribution sector, which honestly it doesn't matter what industry you're in. I'm a firm believer that data or information should never be taken without proper consent from the users. This prompted Tim Sweeney to comment, and I quote, it's actually my fault for pushing the launcher team to support it super quickly and identifying that we had to change it. Since the issue came to the forefront, we're gonna fix it. Although I do have respect for someone that comes out and says, hey, I made a mistake, and I'm working on correcting it. Hell, I can appreciate that. But unfortunately, it just comes out as another issue with launching the program well before it was ready, taking the company's image from anti-consumer and doing something wrong to just not being competent enough to execute this without a lot of bumps in the road. Which leads me to my next point. Epic was touted as being a real competitor to Steam, which if this were to happen, it would be nothing but beneficial to us as consumers. Companies compete, the consumer wins. At its core, it's pretty simple. But unfortunately, that's not how Epic started out. They came to the gunfight forgetting to bring a gun. The program launched missing what many would call key features. They were missing dedicated forums, missing any form of reviewability, and possibly the most important was their inability to stream to other devices. These examples are just a few things missing from the store, all of which Steam already had in place and does for its users. Epic decided to take the same path as so many other gaming companies out there. Just launch something, anything and we'll fix it later. Taking a very anti-consumer stance on providing a quality product in exchange for people's money. This ultimately backfired on them with most of the gaming consumers being fed up with these types of launches. People being tired of paying for or using these half-hearted products. Taking the sentiment, if the company can't take their own product seriously, then why should the consumer? 
just to name a couple that have launched in similar states, like Fallout 76, No Man's Sky. At the end of the day, people are tired of being disappointed. While some of these issues have been approved upon, there are still many more that as of now haven't been. While there are more stops to make on the roadmap of how not to launch an online retail service. The last issue that I will bring up was important for most gamers, and that was Epic's practice of paying to have exclusives on their platform. Which, if you have seen my last video, you know that I feel that exclusives are very anti-consumer and are never a good thing for the gamer. With just having exclusives being enough to upset their potential customer base, Epic took it one step further and started getting exclusive rights to games that were already scheduled to come out on other platforms. Take Metro Exodus, for example. It was scheduled to release on Steam, and just a couple of weeks before it came out, on Steam, and after so many people pre-ordered it on Steam, it was pulled off of the Steam store, leaving many to figure out how to get refunds and who to blame for the poorly taken action. Now me, personally, I place blame on both Epic and 4 games, feeling that neither had the consumer in mind when they made the deal. Epic wanted to be the only one to have the game that people wanted, and 4 games wanted a bigger paycheck, neither of which has anything to do with gamers. Now I have and will continue to be critical of this company, because I want this company to succeed. I want companies like this to succeed. Gamers deserve an even wider marketplace to shop from, creating the best deal possible for the consumers. Now that we have that out of the way. As you can see, Epic Game Store in the past has not always been put in the best of light, to say it mildly, having issues and taking tons of flack from PC gaming communities. Now Epic is making another move to clean up their image a little by adjusting the refund policy to introduce a new self-service refund for games on their platform that people may not have enjoyed. Which, let me be frank, this is something that should have been put in place day one, but it's definitely better late than never. If they are going to be taken seriously as a top tier platform to get your games from and actually compete with Steam, the new policy now allows gamers to get a refund from Epic for any reason within the first 14 days of purchase, as long as the game has not been logged for over two hours worth of playtime, which completely makes sense to me. Two weeks seems like a fair time allotment to get around to playing the game. Say, if it's a game that piques your interest, so you buy it. But life gets in the way of actually getting a chance to play it immediately. This happens to people all the time. Our lives are busy with family and work, just to name a few, and we do not always have the time that we would like to devote to video games. And I believe it is a good faith move on Epic's part to not punish people that get caught up in their other responsibilities. But the two-week limit also means that if someone is short on, say, rent one month, they can't just purge their gaming library to get some quick money to make the payment. It only makes sense for the company to put a time limit on the refunds, or else they would never feel that they were on stable ground, with the potential of having people essentially renting the games at that point with no profit to Epic, which, understandably, doesn't seem to be what they're interested in doing. Now for the part that is more intended to keep the company in the safe zone and is an aspect that could be argued for being in the company's favor and not the consumer. That being said, refunds again can't be completed if more than two two hours of the game have been played. This is obviously in place to protect the profitability of Epic Games, keeping to where people can't just purchase a game, play the whole story mode in a day, and then get their money back. Get a new game, rinse, repeat. If that was allowed, Epic would start hemorrhaging cash. Now the argument can be made that for certain games, is having two hours really enough time to decide if you like the game enough? Can you really say that you enjoy a new RPG being only a couple hours in? Also not taking into account that some of these games could use half your allotted time just in the character creation screen. With that said, this is a complicated subject, and one that doesn't necessarily have a simple blanket answer that covers every person and every situation. Also, you have to think that a poorly instituted return policy for a company can and will hurt their bottom line. When the consumer can feel cheated based off a poor product and not be allowed to receive a refund, and I'm looking at you Bethesda, all this leading to the consumer confidence in the future beginning to waver. Possibly so much that they stop purchasing from the store for fear that if they don't like the game, they're just out of the money and stuck with something that they don't enjoy. Another aspect that could make it to where someone couldn't get a refund to return the game is that if the player broke community guideline rules or violated the company's terms of service. Now this is where things get a little gray for me, but to be honest this is a whole nother video and one that in the future I intend to make. But this means that if you purchase a game and then almost immediately enter the game and get banned for some reason, legitimate or not, you cannot turn around and get a refund for the game. This on the surface seems like common sense to me. Not getting into whether or not breaking the community guidelines are correct or incorrect, but just on the basics, hey there's a rule, you broke it. But there are a few things that can make this problematic. 
The first being that not everyone agrees with how community guidelines are laid out and enforced on by most companies. But again, that's a bigger topic. But a more topical concern for this video, and one that's a little less of a touchy debate, is that we all know that algorithms that video games and companies use are not perfect in separating actual violations from ones that can often confuse the program. This often results in the stories that we hear all the time about players who have done nothing wrong, but are still slapped with a ban. It can take days or even weeks for some of these issues to get resolved and the player reinstated back into the game. The reason I bring this up is that if this happens to someone within the first two hours, they can't get a refund. And even if the player still hits the two hour threshold, it can sometimes still take longer than 14 days to get it resolved, negating the 14 day window to also receive a refund. Now this is something that will only affect a small percentage of the player base, but it's still worth having a solution to. So overall, Epic Game Store seems to be making some of the right decisions to try to bring them out of the PR hole that they decided to launch their platform from. But again, credit should be given to where credit is due. I'm a firm believer in giving companies and people a second chance to correct previously poor decisions. Mistakes happen as long as you can take ownership of them and take steps to improve. I don't mind giving companies another shot. Hopefully they continue to make the right decisions and continue to grow because providing competition to Steam, like I said, is a good thing. So overall, at least in concept, I believe Epic Games is a positive thing for the community. It's a beneficial thing for gamers. Having competition in business promotes creativity, and that creativity is geared towards and often in favor of the consumer. It forces companies to either be better or be cheaper if they don't want to lose the consumer base that they have. Now I have no love for Steam. They have gone far too long with being the top dog with no real reason to be innovative or think of ways to improve the experience of their customers. Epic Games, if they can start pulling this off correctly, and by doing things like this they're taking a step in the right direction, they can challenge Steam, which forces them to either lower their prices or make a better experience while using Steam. If they don't, Epic will slowly start absorbing their customer base, stealing users away from them. So if Steam wants to stay on the top, they are going to need to start taking new approaches to how they do business, especially while Epic keeps putting more and more pressure on them by hopefully putting the consumer first. Well then. Let me know now in the comments how you feel about Epic and Steam, going back and forth. Is one company obviously better than the other? Or do both have the potential to be better than they currently are? Give me your opinion. And thank you for taking the time to watch my video, and I do have to apologize for the visual quality of the video, and it's something that I will hopefully soon be addressing. Thank you all again.